What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So this is the kickoff to my best of year-end annual videos uh, that I do every single December throughout the month and we're kicking it off with my favorite niche pickups, my favorite niche releases specifically, not just things that I got, but that was released in 2023. These are my particular favorites. So some of you will agree or disagree, but at the end of the day, it's just my favorites. It's the ones that got me the most excited as they came out for one reason or another, where there was, you know, maybe it was the fun of the scent profile, the way it smelled, the memories that tied to it, just for whatever reason. These were my 10 favorite niche releases of 2023. So stay tuned. I felt it only right to start with this fragrance because at the recording of this video, it's still currently the only fragrance I've ever given a 10 overall out of 10 in an individual review to. It's Riser Parfums Isola Blue, the rebranded, rebottled Oligarch Parfum, which if you've ever smelled the previous version of this, it was a little bit denser, but the scent profile is exactly the same. Um, Siage was a little bit heavier, but not much of a trade-off here. This has a beautiful, sweet, green citrus type of smell to it. There's tropical fruits and coconuts and citruses and greens and musks and woods. It's typical Raja Dove stuff with a just diverse, super complex note breakdown where you can peel away different nuances. It's not always that easy to pick out notes, but you can grab different nuances. And this is so good. The thing for me that made it get a 10 out of 10, of course, the quality is excellent. The performance, I think, for the scent profile is perfect. It's one of the best smelling fragrances I've ever put my nose on. And you couple all of that together with what I believe to be one of the most do-it-all versatile scent profiles I've ever smelled, where I literally think you could wear this at any time for any situation, any body, any age, like literally the most versatile fragrance I've ever come across. That's added points right there, guys. That's what takes a 9.5, which is for the entirety of this channel, which is a little over four and a half years of the recording of this video, of doing over 2,500 videos so far on YouTube. That is what takes a 9.5 to a 10 for me. Because for the longest time, 9.5s were my 10s. Longtime viewers, you've heard me say that a bunch of times. If I give it a 9.5, that is my 10 out of 10s. And that's still going forward. It takes something remarkably special that's perfect for me to warrant a 10. Because I still, until this, I really believe there was no such thing as a perfect fragrance for me. Because what's perfect for me might be a total letdown for you because it's all subjective and situational. Everybody's got different tastes and situations and so on. But for me, 10 out of 10. So, of course, this is one of my favorite niche releases of the year. I figured we'd start it off with, you know, probably the number one, really, <laughs> Raja Parfums Solo Blue. Now, this was the clear favorite, even though it's not the more complex, richer scent of the two that they released this year that I got my hands on. It's just a fun, lively, fresh fragrance. This is from M. Mikalef. This is Gin Tonic. This came out around the springtime this year. It's a zesty, fresh crisp and spicy gin and tonic smelling fragrance without a heavy juniper, gin accord, tonic water. The typical things you would expect for something called gin and tonic aren't really there, but they managed to make the accords that smell like a crisp, freshly poured gin and tonic. Cocktail hour type of fragrance is the way I've dubbed it. Man, that is, it's just so, it's got this crisp, like think biting into a green apple, that kind of crisp, but not the apple smell but that, cr that crunch, that crispness is, I'm trying to really paint you a picture here. God, it smells so good. It's floating in the air. Um, it's just an enjoyable scent. At the end of the day, if a fragrance can make me smile every time I wear it, it's naturally going to be one of my favorite pickups of the year and potentially one of my favorite fragrances in my collection because I do have a large amount of fragrances. So uh, to find come across something that's noteworthy for me personally, uh, obviously is going to make a fragrance stand out. And for me, this year, Gin Tonic was definitely one of those fragrances. Absolutely worth a sample. If you're looking for something, it's not wildly unique or challenging or off the beaten path or anything, just a fun, quality, bright and uplifting scent. 
You might want to check it out. This is one of my favorite 2023 releases as far as niche. It's M. Mikalef. This is, I want to get it to focus real quick. This is Gentonic. Now this came out right around the very beginning of the year. This was the second set of releases from a relatively new independent niche house. Um, doing remarkable work. I mean, great, great stuff. We're talking about Sphinx Fragrances. And it's still my favorite release from the house. And they brought some heat since this release too. But we're going to talk about Sphinx Elixir right now. So they have this Sphinx Mystery Blend Accord that's in the top. And it's clearly got a rich, warm incense oud. There's a rock rose note. It's got this thick, jammy, sweet rose smell to it. Without being an overdone, typical oud rose smell. Very smoky. It's bright and airy while still being dense, deep, and rich. Like it's able to, it doesn't come across as too heavy a wear while still maintaining a thickness to the aroma. Just beautiful. This particular rose literally has that jammy smell to it. I know sometimes you'll hear me and others talk about that. And when you come across that particular smell, it makes sense when we say it. It's got this thick jam light texture to the aroma and a, a pretty beautiful sweetness. Um, that I wouldn't relate to anything delicious or delectable or sugary, which makes it that much more enjoyable for me. So resinous, deep, balsamic, while still being aromatic, a little ozonic and bright, uh, ambery, warm, not really all that spicy. Like there's a lot going on here. It has a beautiful intoxicating depth to it and phenomenal performance. This is one, if in my opinion, if you're only going to try one, you want something that's on the more, more unique side that really stands out. Maybe you want something great for a special occasion. This is one I would encourage you getting a sample or the travel atomizer. Of course, you can get a bottle if you want to get a bottle, but I encourage you get your nose on this one. If you want something a little bit different, you want a different experience, not your typical oud rose fragrances, but still has that Middle Eastern niche touch to it. Man, this is one of the better releases of the year, in my opinion. Sphinx Fragrances, Sphinx Elixir. Now, another indie niche brand that really does phenomenal work, and there was a few releases from the house this year, and I really had to pick the favorite for my situation, because I really enjoy everything that they've put out from City Rhythm. Shout out to Niles. He, he just, he gets it. He does a great job with his brand, but for me, St. John, U.S. Virgin Islands, this is my favorite release of the year from him. Uh, this is Guava Pineapple. I believe it's passion fruit is the other tropical exotic fruit. Coconut. There's a little bit of spice to it. There's some florals, a touch of sweetness. Very musky as it dries. Beautiful atomizer. It's a 50% concentration. It stays forever. You can go in the pool and this stuff's still going to be on you after you spray it if you wear this as your vacation fragrance. Very much the vibe he was going for. So City Rhythm's known for trying to, you know, capture the essence and the aromas of famous cities all over the world, especially all over North America so far. Uh, and Niles has been doing a great job. He's picked a lot of great places, and like New Orleans jazz and booze. I'm from South Louisiana, 45 minutes away from New Orleans. Spent a ton of times over the years. That's my favorite from the house because it's home to me because he really captured the essence of the city, the alcoholism, beignets, all, all the, the food, everything that goes with it. So I would encourage you to check that out, but that's not a release from this year. Uh, as far as his releases this year, Overall, just remarkable work. I encourage you to get your nose on this one. If you want tropical but crazy powerful and doesn't smell like any other tropical fragrances I've come across, this is this is definitely one worth looking into. Uh, it's one of my favorite niche releases of the year. St. John, U.S. Virgin Island Water. U.S. Virgin Islands. So it's such a habit to say Virgin Island Water, right? From City Rhythm. Now there's one caveat to this because there are two newer releases from the house that I haven't smelled yet in the Ohm line. They have number three and number four that came out. I don't know if they would have beat this out or not, but I can tell you of what came out this year when it comes to Kajal Perfumes, Masa. Ever since I got my nose on this, I've been raving about how uniquely awesome and versatile this is because it takes fresh water accord, fresh green, spicy green, earthy green, and woodsy, and meld it all together to make a not-so-busy smelling smooth composition that I think is a unique daily driver for somebody that wants quality and to not smell like anybody wearing the typical blue, blue de Chanel's and Sauvage's and YSL's and stuff like that at your workplace. And it's also 
such a beautiful quality blend that I think you could really do anything with it. It's I just think it really excels in a professional setting to really set a tone for you because it's its own personality in a professional setting, but you can wear this for whatever. Beautiful work with the crystals and emeralds and everything here on the top. You get the focus so you can see that. They always really bring the heat when it comes to their presentations. Kajal is known for that. Shout out to Mo. Wonderful owner, wonderful brand. They put out phenomenal scents. And uh, I knew from the moment I smelled this, this was going to be in this video. Sure, the new Kajal Ohm 3 and Kajal Ohm 4 probably had a chance. Because Kajal Ohm 1 was my favorite from the house for the longest time. Um, eventually, I will get my nose on those. But this is special. If you like fresh and green, earthy and green, with still this aquatic feel, it's kind of weird the way this worked out. But I'm glad it worked out the way it did because it's phenomenal. In my opinion, it's one of the best niche releases of 2023. It's Kajal Masa. So you'll notice a few of these in this video. It's more independent, smaller luxury brands that really speak to me a lot of the times because they're doing such beautiful work because there's all these mass marketed niche brands. Sure, they, they put some great releases out, but a lot of the times they'll piggyback off of one another with smelling similar to you know certain fragrances and kind of their own inspiration of where fragrances and brands like Maison Daba, they're not doing that. This is Silent Night. This is a relatively new release, came out within the last, I want to say, month and a half, two months, something like that. I literally wore this yesterday. Yeah, yesterday at the recording of this video it was my scent of the day. I've worn it a few times now. Like I said, I've gotten it recently. And the way the plum comes across with the, the soft yet rich woody tone, the spice isn't overdone with this floral note, like the woods and the wood spice floral plum combo kind of do a dance with one another, a tango, if you will, where it's kind of a back and forth the whole time. Uh, this aroma is magic. It's strong, it's present, but it's not overbearing. And I, that's the kind of strength I like from fragrance. Sure, I like them to last all day. Who doesn't like their fragrance to last all day? But I don't want my fragrance to speak for me all the time. There's situations for that. This one, I'm not going to just overwhelm you if I come into your space or walk by you. You'll be able to get a strong enough whiff, don't get me wrong, but it's going to be alluring and intriguing because while not wildly unique, it also doesn't remind me of anything in particular and the quality's top notch here. It's so juicy and it does it's not that synthetic plum, which I enjoy in designer fragrances. I'm not going to sit here and knock the synthetic plum note, but it's a natural, like fresh cut or fresh bite into an actual plum type of juicy richness. And I think the spice really enhances the richness of the smell of this plum. Absolutely a must try. Their first release, Sovereign, was special. Silent Night shatters it. It totally overshadows and dwarfs that release to me. Don't get me wrong, that's a great release, but this is a couple clicks ahead of it in my opinion, and this is definitely the one that gets the stamp of approval from me because it's easily, easily one of my favorite niche releases of 2023, Mason Daba, Silent Night. Now with this next one, it may surprise some of you that the newest release isn't my pick because I know people have, are head over heels in love with Signature Aurum from Zaharoff, and don't get me wrong, I think it's phenomenal. I think... Behind Rosé and Leather Tobacco, this is the third best release of the house, and it's some people's favorite, but I think this is number. This is top three from the house for me. But, but, because of the memories tied to this, the fun and vibrance, I love tying that word to this fragrance when I talk about it, uh, and the memories of the move to the beach this summer that I've had and everything, for me, Zaharoff Signature Coco Loco is the release of the year from Zaharoff for me. Again, I had to point out because people are going to mention Aurum in the comments because people are loving Aurum. I totally get it. Totally get it. But this is more me and especially the memories that came with it for this summer's release. Um, it, it was just a magical summer is kind of how I look at it because we couldn't be happier with our move. This was one of the aromas of the festivities for me this past summer. I wore it to the beach. I wore it beachside brunch to beachside dinners. I wore it before, right before the move when we were packing everything. So I have all of that memory tied to the scent as well. So it just made for a special fragrance for a special time for me. So that kind of stuff matters 
when picking a favorite for me. So while this is remarkable, like I said, I, dare I say, this is the better fragrance of the two. But because of the situation and everything that goes with it that I just listed, that makes this a bit more special to me. And because of that, it makes it a better release of this year for me. So I would encourage you to try both of them. They're both great and wildly different personalities and seasons and situations. Diversity in a collection, that's the way to go. But if you haven't tried this yet, it's a bowl of tropical fruits. The vibrance I speak of is this bright spice from cardamom. There's a little bit of florals. You get some musk. You get some vanillic sweetness. But you get this lovely blonde cedar smell that kind of grounds it. Offers complexity. Has great performance. It's a colorful scent, just like the presentation. For me, my favorite is a Haroff Signature Coco Loco. Next, I want to talk about Argos because Christian released a bunch of great ones this year. All around the same time, within a short time frame, he released some heat. It was a great year for Argos. And while I do believe the new Triumph of Bacchus X-Straight, I think, is the best fragrance. Because Triumph of Bacchus, the Eau de Parfum, was my favorite Argos fragrance. This is richer, deeper, stronger, more potent Triumph of Bacchus. But I already have Triumph of Bacchus. So it's redundant. It's stronger but redundant. So for me, the new freshness of Birth of Venus, I think was my favorite release because of the wearability for me and the just unique scent profile. Birth of Venus for me is special because you get fruits, you get citruses, you get a little bit of chocolate and sea salt of all things, but it's not overdone. It doesn't really make it gourmand or anything like that. It just adds nuance and depth, a rich depth to the scent. It's marketed for women. I actually think it's perfectly unisex. I think it's least less feminine than Palace Athene and Poor Feminine. There's a lot of guys in this community that wear both of those, and I think those are beautiful as well. But this is the one. This is the one. This is what I deem to be the freshie of the house. Even though it's not super airy, it's a watery, juicy, not overly sweet citrus fruit combination in the top. Like I said, with that salt and chocolate, there's a little bit of florals. Of course, you get some a, a soft wood in the background. This is special. I smell it floating in the air still. I just, I had to pick this one because this is the one I've been reaching for the most of his newest releases because it's just so different from everything else I have from him. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, Love Triumphs Over War, Fall of Phaeton. Those are show out fragrances for special occasions. But as far as daily wear, this has been my jam at certain points. I love wearing this one. So for me, my favorite niche release of the year from Argos birth of venus now i haven't had this one for long it's the newest release from carnar barcelona and i was very surprised because it's metallic it's herbal green and it's leather it's called revolution this is good stuff i think it's such a great oddball fragrance release why do i say oddball because it's so metallic anytime a uh, heavy metallic accord is prominently featured in the fragrance that makes it kind of a strange fragrance to me. And this is like good strange. And then you mix in this bitter herbal tea note, this mate note with this leather accord that's not animalic, but rich and supple. I think it's a good combination. Cause you have that earthiness of that mate note that I think an animalic leather would have made it a bit more challenging of a wear and not as pleasant would have added even more uniqueness to it, I'm sure, but I think it's so highly wearable the way it is composed. Uh, big fan of this one. Great performer. I mean, all of these, everything in this video is a great performer. Probably the thing that's closest to being weak would be like gin tonic, and I still get like six to eight hours of longevity out of that, but Revolution, I'm such a fan. I'm such a fan. If you like metallic fragrances and or leather-based fragrances, that makes this one a must-try. Definitely a great release for me. Revolution from Carnival Barcelona. And the funny thing is, I did save my favorite niche release for last. Uh, a, lot, a lot of you watching this already know, because I've made sure to say it every time I've talked about it, how it's my favorite niche release of the year. I did save my number one for number one. Even though I didn't rank everything else, I did save my favorite for last. Even though Isola Blue got a 10 out of 10, the uniqueness of Faces of Francis for me, just do it, from Wilhelm Parfumery. This is another metallic fragrance. So the last two we're talking about are metallic. But this one's even more unique than Revolution. So 
Loaded with aldehydes and saffron in the top, it's super fizzy and bright and bubbly, like a really good dominant aldehydes accord can do, with a metallic, warm, and spicy accord to go hand in hand with it. It doesn't sound like it would go great together, at least to me it doesn't, and it so does. This is such a great fragrance. We're actually going to give a little spritz on the hand for this one. We're not just spraying in the air. And just left that, let that waft. Warm, spicy, bright, fizzy, and heavily metallic. This is a heavily metallic saffron note. Oh, it's a little astringent because it's so fizzy and bright and just in your face. And that could be a little bit of perfumer's alcohol mixing with it too. But and There's a grilled pistachio. There's an oud note, but I don't get any kind of funk. If anything, it adds to this dry, woody accord that I do get. But what stands out to me more is this cypriol. I get kind of this earthy green facet with a dry, pencil-shaving, woody type of nuance with a creaminess because it transitions greatly from bright, fizzy aldehydes, warm, spicy, metallic saffron to you lose the aldehydes at a certain point. The spice tones down you maintain some of the metallic tone of saffron because it's a saffron bomb. You get saffron start to finish, but it does settle and slow down as time progresses because the grilled pistachio note, the woods, and the, and the green tones come out more. So it becomes creamy, a little dry woodsy with a touch of earthy green. Performance is great. And for all those things I said about that, believe it or not, I think it's hyper versatile. And this is one that will absolutely make you stand out. Not the best choice in the summer, but I think you can pull it off if you're mindful of the setting and just go easy on the sprays because this one's, this one's pretty stout and thick. I think it could be a little cloying and overwhelming in high humidity. But if you're indoors most of the day, who cares? It doesn't matter. You're in the air conditioning. Uh, but the rest of the year, spring, fall, winter, Anytime you could rock it, you're going to stand out no matter where you go. Nobody else is wearing anything like this unless they happen to have this fragrance. It's that unique to me. It's that special. To me, best niche release of the year. Wilhelm Parfumery, Faces of Francis. Well, guys, that's my favorites. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, because I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. What's some of your favorite releases of the year as far as niche? Some of these may have surprised you. Some of these may have not. Uh, it's hard to whittle down to 10 in such a good year because I don't care what anybody says. In my opinion, 2023 was a phenomenal year of releases for fragrances across things that got cheap right away, Middle Eastern stuff, designers, niche, indie releases. It was just a great year in the world of fragrance, in my opinion. I picked up a ton of stuff this year that are new releases, so these lists are much more difficult to whittle down than you may think. So there's going to be some surprises in all of them throughout the month. But thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of my 10 favorite niche pickups that released this year and you give them a spray now, pretty confident you'll thank me later. Have a good one, guys.